No, I was a skier. And I spent a lot of time skiing in Switzerland, but never, I had never been to Lausanne, and I never came here for any artistic reason. It was purely athletic. How beautiful it was, simply with the lake. It, it's just beautiful, and um, I was staggered by the museum. It is. I know you're moving, <laughs> and I know it's difficult to work with this limited space, but the physicality of it is just lovely, and the people were wonderful. I was, I'm really, really impressed. No, it's probably my fourth time in Switzerland, but uh, when I used to come to Switzerland, I came as a, first as a tourist, and then I was very involved in an organization called Pax Romana many years ago when I was in, in university in, in Cuba. And I, I used to go to visit with the people in Pax Romana. But I haven't been in Switzerland since 1961. Oh, it's a fantastic museum. There are three great things about this museum. The less important one is the location. The most important one is the staff. The staff is the best staff I've ever seen in my life. And the, uh, the passion that they have for what they're doing is marvelous. And also the museum is extremely well known in the world as the best museum of photography in Europe. And I was very involved with Aperture Foundation. I was the chairman for several years. And we used to have the show of, that you all have here of uh, several times of showing all the new photographers that are, are studying photography. And it's fantastic, the work you all done. Well, you know, it's very interesting because when I'm going back, we started working together uh, in producing movies. And I hadn't thought about it, but we had gotten, a, we never had a fight about movies. But other things, yes. Other things, yes. <laughs> movies, no. <laughs> Put your clothes away, that kind of thing. <laughs> but it was very interesting because even though we come from totally different backgrounds, um, our taste in art is exactly the same. We'll, we'll go into a show and we'll end up choosing, okay, what are the three photographs that you love the most? And they may not be the same in order, but the same the three will be there. So it eliminated a lot of fighting. <laughs> well, I think the, the fascinating thing about this show, we probably have close to a thousand photographs in the collection. And Pauline and, and Tatiana spent a tremendous amount of time going through the closets and the flat files and selecting photographs. And the way they selected the photographs is a way that we never have looked at our photographs. It's based on lines, you know, and it's the, the selection of the photographs is absolutely fantastic. And the most beautiful thing about it is how they've been mounted. Because when you look at the way they have mounted the photographs, you can really understand how they selected based on lines. And you have photographs that we have for many years, and we didn't know that they communicated to each other the way they're communicating here. In, we have a, we have a five-story house in New York, and, and we hang the photographs in the rooms and in the wall. And what we do is, it's kind of interesting because sometimes you put a photograph next to other photographs and don't communicate. So we have to change the way the photographs are put so the photographs can communicate with each other. And the way you've done it here is marvelous. It's a totally, you know, we've been collecting forever. And we thought we knew the photographs. But this is an entirely new way. We had never shot, thought of it in terms of lines. It was astonishing. And then to find out how they do communicate. As I said, it's just opened our eyes, which doesn't happen very often when it's our own thing. First of all, I think the approach 
of the people in the museum. As I said, it opens a whole new perspective. And while we've had individual works on various museums in Europe, we've never had a show of our collection. And so this is a first, and it's thrilling. Hopefully. <laughs> We have, the collection has been uh, shown before this time, has been shown twice. The first time it was shown was it started in the Museum of Corpus Christi and then it traveled to, to, uh, to Dartmouth College and it traveled to different places in the United States. And the selection at that time on the first collection was made by Adam Weinberg, who's now the, the the, the director of the Whitney Museum. At that time, he was a, a curator. Mm -hmm. The second show was made in Jacksonville by two very intelligent cu curators, and it traveled to, uh, to Philadelphia, to, uh, to Princeton University, and to different museums in the United States. And we had some photographs that had been borrowed, you know, the Fundacion Cartier, etc., to show, but we never had an experience that we had like this museum because the quality of the selection is superb. The book is marvelous. The book that's been made is marvelous. And, uh, and, and we're extremely happy that this great museum is going to show our photographs. I think the best way of preparing is coming with a totally open mind and then reading what is written on the walls, because that tells you exactly what you should be looking for. And I think for somebody coming for the first time and not having a background in photography, the idea that you could look for lines is an anchor and a way that they can suddenly start seeing. I think after this exhibition and they go and see more, they'll be able to broaden their perspective, broaden their thoughts. But I think the introduction, it's very simple. Look at lines, dum, dum, and la, la. <laughs> and I think it's marvelous. And that's, that's exactly what they should look for here. And that's how it showed. I think that probably, the, you know, I think the best way to look at art, and especially at this show, is to come with an absolute open mind. Mm -hmm. You know, don't have a pre preconceived of what you're going to see. I agree, the text on the walls is superb, you know, and, uh, and, and just spend some time in front of the photograph and let the photograph talk to you, you know, and they do. Yeah. You know, they, you have a, you create a, a special relationship with a photograph when you, when you see it and you think about it, you know, but it's, it's, I don't think you have to have a preconceived idea of what I go to see, but, the whole concept that Sandra said, looking at lines, is extremely important. After Pauline sent, sent us the, the essay that she did on the lines, mm -hmm. you know, I went walking around our place in Southeast Georgia, and jokingly, I took a lot of photographs that had lines in them. I sent them to Tatiana and Pauline, <laughs> you know, because I, I thought, you know, I was looking at when I was taking the photograph, I was not taking the photograph as a photograph, I was looking at what lines I could include in the photograph. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. Too bad. <laughs> Every work is singular, but the way they have mounted them, you know, they create a relationship, you know. Okay, I want to add something. When we buy our photographs, there's no idea of anything except how the photograph speaks to us. And we didn't think there was any relationship. We thought each one was bought separately. But when we had our first show and they were all laid out, we saw that they were similar, that they all had a sensibility uh, they were always slightly avant-garde. Um, they all said something that we felt nothing else that we had said it. And we realized that there was a relationship because it was us. It was 
the same two people. So it was dealt with in our own sensibilities and our own tastes, which we were not aware of until we laid a hundred together and they thought, yeah, look at that. They're all a little avant-garde. They're all a little sense. They're all this. So there was a uniformity mm -hmm. that we weren't aware of. The first book of the collection they t was, was printed by Aperture and it was written by Adrian Weinberg. It's called From the Heart. Yeah. And it, it's, that's what it says everything. When you look at a photograph, it has to, to affect you, you know, and, and the way you, you think about it, it affects your heart. My wife is more neutral. My wife says it affects her stomach. Yeah, I, I say my stomach flips over when I see something great. And somebody, a curator said, Sandra, you're an art major. I mean, that's a stupid way of describing it. I said, no, that's an honest way of describing it. All my sensibilities come down to my stomach. And when I see something, it goes, whoops. And the way I look at it is when I look at a photograph and I close my eyes and, and two hours later, two days later, I still remember the photograph, but I remember larger. If you don't, we don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's that's... It's, and, and it's so important because it's, it, it, it goes back in your subconscious, mm -hmm. you know. And don't ask me, I have a big problem. I, you can ask me about all the photographs we have. I can describe the photographs. Don't ask me about the name of the photograph, mm -hmm. photographer, because I forget. But I don't forget the, the image. I had the images sure. in my mind. You have, it's like, okay. it's like you have children. Which is your best children? Which is the children you remember? No. But let me add something to it. Some of them were bought under special conditions. In other words, when we were married, I had collected before. And when we were married, the first, it was a Robert Maplethorpe, first image we bought together. Milty Jones. Milty Jones. So that has a special place. Then my first three photographs that I ever bought, I mean, will remain forever. So it has nothing to do with the photograph per se. It has to do with the emotional conditions under which we bought it. That's what makes it special. And also, the other, another issue we have, and I think it's kind of important, mm -hmm. is that we only want to buy vintage photographs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And vintage photographs, you know, they say, no, vintage is old. No, vintage is not old. Mm -hmm. Vintage is just mean that the photographer took the picture and printed it within five years. Mm -hmm. So he's, at that moment he printed it, he knows how the picture was going to look in the paper, you know. And what has happened is, as some, especially some photograph, photographers that have died, that the state start printing again the photographs, that the quality of the photographs is completely different. Mm -hmm. So there's a picture here of, uh, and I'll show it to you later, I don't want to say the name of the picture, but I'll show it to you, mm -hmm. that the print that is now in the market is so completely different than the print that was printed by the photographer when he was alive. That's a big difference. And that's why we only like to buy vintage. Well, let's define digital revolution. Okay, digital revolution is two ways, you know. One, the camera is digital, which means that you don't have to carry a roll of in your, in your bag and, and you only have 24 photographs to shoot or, or 36 photographs to shoot. The second one is that depending then you, the, or the quality of your camera and the quality of the thing in the camera, you, know, you, can, you can play with it after the picture is taken using a computer. Or the old method, you know, that you had the, the negative, you know, you printed the negative and it was beautiful because you suddenly saw the image appear, you know, when you were, when you were developing it. You know, but you, you had not that much control. Mm -hmm. you, know, you had a little bit of control. You, know, you could do some, in you know, the dark room, you can play with it a little bit. But with digital, you have a lot more control. So we don't look 
uh, is a photograph was digital or non-digital where we buy. We look what is the quality of the image. A photograph, no matter how they've taken it, is what we respond to, not the way it was done, the result. Oh, well, I can, you have to do you, I'll do me. I was quite young and I was working for junior council at the Museum of Modern you were Art. A member of, what? You were a member of Junior I was Council. a member of the Junior Council. <laughs> well, the members worked for it for free. <laughs> that was the difference. <laughs> we didn't get paid <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, and I was an art major at college. I drew, painted. Photography didn't exist. It didn't exist. The only thing I ever saw was sculpture and painting. And I had bought some work by then. And I was trotting around the Museum of Modern Art and they had an Ache show who was a French photographer. I had never seen any photography my father hadn't taken with my smiling at the camera. I looked at this and I don't know why I had an epiphany. My heart was in my mouth. It just changed everything. I had never seen anything, even in my painting, that affected me so much. And at that point, the Museum of Modern Art was lucky to have one of the greatest photography curators in the world at that moment working for it. His name was John Shikarsky. I trotted into John's office. I said, tell me about photography. Well, they're always happy to get another acolyte. <laughs> I sat on his floor for three days. He brought in all the aches. He gave me a synopsis of the whole photography scene. Up, and up until then, this was the 70s, a lot has happened. I bought three aches for $250 each because they were raising money for photography and they were selling duplicate images. So if they had two prints of one image, they sold one. I bought three for $250 each. I came home. My family said they're going to send the men in the white jacket to cart me away to the nearest insane asylum. I cannot tell you how they went on. And I kept saying, I just bought Rembrandt. You don't understand. I just bought Rembrandt. And I did. <laughs> That's my story. You can go on yours. I gave photography a different way. Uh, when I was a, a kid, you know, uh, my father was in the cattle business and we used to sell, I was, I'm originally from Cuba, and we used to sell a lot of our cattle to South America. And naturally, you had to take pictures of the cows and the bulls and things like that to tell the was possible. So I used to take the pictures during the day. At night, I used to develop and show it to my father the next day. My father said, no, this cow moved her paw a little bit to the front. We had to take it again. You know, so I reached a point that I love photography, but I hated that type of photography. And eventually, I continued to take photographs when I was in university. I was very involved in the newspaper. The university I took photographs for the newspaper. And when I came to the United States, uh, I continued to love photography, but never seen it from a purely artistic standpoint. You know, I used to take, I love to take photographs. I, I, I decided to take a course of photography at the university and I took it. And then I met Sandra, you know, and, uh, and she, we started to talking about photography and, and I, my whole outlook changed from actually taking photographs, which I still do, mm -hmm. you know, to looking at photographs as something that you should have for yourself. Because what I did collect, I collected paintings. I didn't collect photography. Yeah, and then I got very extremely involved because of her influence, I got very involved in with the Aperture Foundation, which I was involved there for almost 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, but, and uh, Sandra was, from a standpoint of trying to promote photography, you know, she was who, who started 
the, co the photography collection for Gilman and Paper Company is now at the Museum of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Mm -hmm. He was the one who convinced the Whitney Museum that they didn't have a photography collection to start collecting photography. It is an art sort of <laughs> It is an art. That's all I heard. All yeah. I heard. And, and, uh, and now she's the chairman of, of the photography committee. Okay. And, the, and the, the curator for photography is named after her. You know, so she's been extremely involved. And, uh, and what we do is, when we have time, or we try to make time, we try to go to galleries to see what is new, you know. And when we travel, we, come to, we have come several times to Paris Photo. We have gone to Arco in Madrid, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we have, you know, but, and we were familiar with the quality of the exhibits the museum has done because I saw them in the United States. So, and, uh, and it's kind of interesting because when we go, we have to, the only two, pic two pictures that we have bought without the other person seeing it. You know, one is here. One is the Maplethorpe, one is the Maplethorpe that you have of the Irish. Mm -hmm. I bought that without you. And the other one is a very beautiful photograph of a, of a lamp in Brasilia that was done by a German photographer that she bought without me. Gersky. A Gersky. First Gersky. <laughs> Early Gersky. <laughs> so, Great but, son, <laughs> good but, girl. But the rest we have agreed. <laughs> very simple word, they're idiots. <laughs> no, that's not so right. <laughs> Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> but, no, it's an art. That's what I was screaming at the Whitney when they were saying. I was saying it's exactly the same as any other art, judged by the same criteria, same standards. There's no difference. And thank God the world has now accepted that definition. I'm sorry it was necessary. You know, I wish we didn't have to struggle. I would have beautiful works of our photography on our walls done by Walker Evans, I mean. And people would come in and say, oh, did your father do that? Because they couldn't imagine that there'd be anything on my walls, that photography that, they, that my father didn't take. And my answer was, I wish he had. But, but it's, thank God, thank God it's changed. There's a world now, photographers can make a living, they're recognized. I mean, some of them, of course, are in the skyscraper thing, but we won't even go into that. But it is totally accepted as an equal art form, and I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Dream come true. Didn't think it was possible. No, I think that, you know, the, the whole issue is that photography technically now is over 150 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the beginning, photography was done exclusively by the inventors, the chemical, you know, the very rich people that wanted to play with something. The first photograph we, that is in the collection was done in 1868. You know, and we have photographs that were done probably about three weeks ago, not, not three weeks ago, it takes longer than that. A know, year. A, a year ago. <clears throat> but the whole issue is that people are, are looking at it completely different now. You know, they respond to it and, uh, and they, they like to. At the same token, a lot of people are asking, is, is photography now dead? Because everybody has a, a camera on their phone and everybody's taking selfies and and everybody's doing everything. But the answer is no, because, you know, it still has a way of expressing. You know, you have, the photographer has tried to express something, and you try to give the interpretation of what he has expressed. Or you take a photograph, you try to remember a beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's all together. Just come and see it. Okay. No, what I would like to have happen is 
to have people that had never been to a photography show or maybe been one or two, to have happen to them what happened to me with my Ache. It opened up, uh, opened my eyes, opened up a whole new world that has given me such joy. And as I said, that's what I hope will happen to the people that come and look at this. That's the goal. Are we all done? We're all done, and we are, want to thank the staff. The staff is yes, superb. Yes, the staff is wonderful. <laughs> the staff is wonderful. It has been a joy. This has been a totally joyous experience. You all, that one was the first one I, I met. She was the reason we decided on this museum. Because once you meet, meet Tatiana, you know your collection is safe, your art is safe. She is one of the most special people in the world. Thank you, Tatiana.